Welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over the installation of QSync on a QNAP NAS. So I've done a number of videos on the QNAP NAS. I'll put a link in the description of my playlist. In this video, I'm just going to go over the uh, QSync software on the NAS, and then the other videos I'll go over the clients. And also, I'll put a link in the description of the hardware I'm using. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So I'm logged into the interface on my QNAP, and I want to go to App Center. And then I want to go to the magnifying glass, and I'll just type in QSync. So what QSync is, it's kind of like a shared folder kind of setup, kind of like Dropbox or um, Google Drive or I think OneDrive by Microsoft. So I'll click on QSync Central and I'll click Install. Okay, the installation is complete, so I'll click Open. I'll close the App Store. So this is the overview tab, and we have the clients down below. So we have Windows and Mac, we have uh, mobile devices, so that would be Apple and Android, and then we have QSync from the browser. And down here below, we have synchronizing over the internet with my QNAP cloud. There's also a version of QSync available for Ubuntu. So now I'll click on the next section, it's management settings. So we have two options here, it says user management mode or central configuration mode, and one lets the clients determine the configuration, the other uh, has a centralized administrator do the administration. So if we click on central management, you can add a password for the administrator. And then down below here it says preference settings, it says in user customization mode, preference settings will be applied to new devices only. In central configuration mode, preferences will be applied to all devices. So I'll click on edit preferences. So it's grayed out here, but it says apply these settings to all devices when QSync Central is in central configuration mode. And then it says QSync will keep files fully synchronized among the NAS and local computers. And then there's a checkbox here that says do not remove any file on the NAS during synchronization. So what this does is if you delete the files from your computer, it will still store them on the NAS. So you could free up space on your computer. The next tab here we have is policy. And it has conflict policies. It says let me decide for each file. Uh, rename files on the NAS, rename files locally, replace files on the NAS with local files, and replace local files with files on the NAS. So there's a couple different options there if you have two files that have the same name. And then down here we have filter settings. It says during synchronization the system will skip files based on these settings. So this is a blacklist here so you can say you don't want certain files copied over. So you see there's like thumbs, so there's thumbnails, there could be any other hidden files, things like that, uh, backup files, that you don't want to sync over to the NAS. Then the third one here was mails. So there's a couple options here. It says use the NAS SMTP server settings. It says use the mail client on the computer and configure a new SMTP server. And then here you can set up uh, SMTP here. So we'll click on users next. And then on the left here we have online users and then all users. So these are users you can add just for this feature or we can add all users. And we have the accounts I've already set up here. So I have my user account here and it's checked to use the system. Next we have devices. So this will show devices connected up to QSync. We have event logs. So these are all blank because I just installed this. This is team folder. So this would be a folder that's shared amongst multiple people. And we have shared folders. So these are the like the public folder and such. So you can grant privileges to those. The shared file links. And then version control. So version control you can enable version control so when you modify or delete a file it will retain the previous versions of that file. So if we click on enable version control then you can edit the thing here it says enable version control for my QSync folder and then it says target folder for version control select the folders for version control you can select all files and subfolders or select only specific subfolders to save storage space. So you can uh, specify which ones you want version control on I'm going to turn that off for now. And then we can click the advanced tab here, and it says maximum number of versions. So maximum number by default is set to 32, and you can change that here. And then it says the disk space used. So that's all for this video. I just wanted to go over the setup of this so when I make the client videos that I can refer back to this so people can see exactly what it looked like when I set it up. But if you have any questions in the meantime, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.